What's going on everyone? I hope you're having a good week so far. For this week's video, I want to do a full hyperlapse workflow where I show you every step of the way in order to take from photos into a smooth finalized video. Um, so this doesn't sort of apply to Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro um, exclusively. This is just going to cover the sort of before process and then a little bit um, of stabilization afterwards. So the first step in this is to take your hyperlapse. Um, I do mine in a series of photos, which I think is the best way to do it. You could try and do video that was sped up, um, but that's hard to get the timing right. So for this hyperlapse, I had my focus point, which is the point that you want to stay the same in every single frame, which was this top little dot um, on this. This is our legislature in Edmonton. So for every shot you see, I tried to line up that little top dot as best as I could. So that's really important for when you go to stabilize your shots afterwards. Another thing that you should try and think of when you're shooting your hyperlapse is your level. This is something I wasn't really paying attention to, so it's a lot more choppy than I would have liked. But if you have a built-in level on your camera, use that so that every shot is perfectly leveled. These ones, as you can see, it sort of tilts back and forth a little bit, and that's not necessarily what we want. So first step is to take your photos. This is um, 117 photos, which if we were doing about 24 frames per second, that equals four seconds of video. So you need a lot of photos if you want a long hyperlapse. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, it does get pretty tiring if you haven't done one. Um, so less is probably good, um, just especially if you're trying to do this for the very first time. The other thing too that you need to think of is your timing of your photos. In order to get smooth sort of cloud motion, you wanna take your photos at intervals. So you take one step, take a photo, take one step, take a photo. Don't stop and check your phone and take a break or else you'll see a jump in um, the clouds in the sky in your shots. So that's something to keep in mind when you're taking your photos um, and now we're gonna cover your editing. So I like to edit all the photos in Lightroom instead of sort of applying a lot to the exported video um, because you have more control in Lightroom. You can use clarity and some of the highlights. When you're shooting raw in photos, you get a lot more control over top of the, um, over the colors. So this is the photo that I edited here. I have a whole bunch of presets that I made um, and this one is just called Bluebird. which I think is pretty good. You get that nice teal and orange look to it. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply this to every single photo um, that I wanna include in my hyperlapse. So in order to do this, um, you're gonna right click and go develop settings, copy settings. I will copy everything and then select the first photo and then scroll down to the last photo. and then hit right click, develop settings, and hit paste settings. So now it's gonna go through and apply the same um, filter to every single one of the photos in the hyperlapse. If you're gonna do, um, or try not to edit photos individually if one turned out a little bit darker, um, because then you're gonna get sort of a jump in exposure, which you really don't want. Another thing too that um, it's up to personal preference is you can either crop your photo in Lightroom to a 16 by nine, which is gonna be your um, video dimensions. So you could do 16 by nine and cut off the top and the bottom. Um, but if you wanna do something like these spinning hyperlapse or something, it could be beneficial to actually leave that at original so that you have more um, real estate to play with. So I'm just gonna leave that as shot and hit done. So if we go back to our library, we can export all these photos. And I was gonna say, if you guys want some of these photos, let me know and I'll send you a link to um, a Dropbox or Google Drive or something if you wanna try these out on your own. So next up, we're gonna export all these photos. Select the first photo, scroll down to the last photo, hold shift, so we have all those photos and now we're gonna export. So file, export, create a folder. I did one already called hyperlapse tutorial. 
And for this case, I'm not using any file settings um, whatsoever. Leave equality at 100, um, and I did not limit the file size. I just kept everything as full and as uncompressed as possible. We are compressing to a JPEG, um, but that's okay. These are pretty high resolution photos. So hit export on that. And then if we close Lightroom, the folder that we just created. So now in order to get all these photos into a video, we're gonna use a program called Time Lapse Assembler. So Time Lapse Assembler is a really good program. I'll have the link in the description below. It's completely free. And basically this will convert all of the photos into a video, which is pretty cool. So this is the one that we already did. That looks really good. So in order to do this, we're gonna choose our folder. Um, this is the source directory, which is that folder of photos that we just created. So it's on our desktop, hyperlapse tutorial, and you don't have to select all the photos. You just need to make sure those are the only photos that are in this folder. If you had other photos, then it's not gonna, um, it's not gonna work, or it's gonna include all those photos which you don't want. So hit open codec. I like to leave at H.264. It's a pretty, pretty low but high quality file size. That's what YouTube does as well. Um, fairly easy to edit with. Frame rate. Do this. Um, whatever your project frame rate is going to be, I edit in 24 frames per second in Final Cut Pro. So do 24 or do 30, whatever you choose. And I think with Time Lapse Assembler, it is unable to do larger than 4,000 pixels wide. Um, I was trying to do the full 6,000 by 4,000 resolution that my Sony A6300 shoots, um, but it wasn't working and it kept crashing. So um, try it out. But if not, um, just put the width as 4,000, scale proportionally, and resize. So the final output of this should be about 4,000 by 2,700 um, with the 4 by 6 aspect ratio, which is actually really good. Um, that gives us a lot of real estate to play with when it comes to editing. So in um, quality, leave it at max. Um, that's usually the best. And then hit and code. One thing that might happen um, when you do this, sorry to name it, Hyperlapse is it might show that it is frozen like this, um, but in reality, it's not. It's actually just processing through. So if you go into your folder and you find the movie that it's going, so this is the one that we just named, you'll actually see the size is increasing um, as time goes on. So you can see that. Um, the program is actually going through and creating this video, um, even though that when you're hovering over this, it may look like it's frozen. Your computer might say that you need to force it to quit it. Just leave it, let it go, and it will work itself out um, as long as you do that 4,000 um, limit because it won't go over that. So once that's done, that's going to produce a video for us. So I'm just going to quit time lapse assembler and cancel that. And now in our hyperlapse tutorial, we have this whole hyperlapse. So as you can see, this looks pretty good already, but it is a little bit choppy. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Final Cut Pro. And we're going to stabilize this footage. <clears throat> OK, so I'm just going to make a new event. We're going to call it Hyperlapse, create new project, and make sure your frame rate matches um, the Hyperlapse you just created as well. So we're just going to hit OK, Command I, import some footage, go to our desktop Hyperlapse tutorial, and then Hyperlapse tutorial that we just created. So now we can drag this into our timeline zoom in here. As you can see, we have black bars on either side. So all we have to do is crop in to whatever we want. Um, but doing this allows you to play with it a little bit more in um, Final Cut Pro or Adobe, whatever you're using. If you crop in in Lightroom, then there's no way to change your crop after you've already done it and produced the video. So I like to do it in Final Cut if possible. So you can crop that in, that gets rid of the black bars, and then we're gonna hit stabilization. 
So this is going to go through and analyze the dominant motion. So this usually takes a while, especially if it's a 4K sort of higher resolution um, file size, but that's okay. It's usually pretty quick in Final Cut Pro. So we're going to let this render through and then we'll adjust the settings afterwards. Okay, so that cropped in. So what stabilization um, in Final Cut Pro, Pro does is it actually decides between um, different um, types of stabilization. So if you leave it automatic, it will analyze your footage and determine the best form of stabilization. So for this one, it determined that um, individual components of translation, which is side to side, rotation, which is sort of the tilting, and then scale, which is the in and out um, smoothing. So if you switch that to smooth cam, for example, um, or inertia cam, you only get uh, one slider. So leaving it automatic, you get control over the three, which is the smooth cam. So depending on how chopped your footage is, is determines how much you're going to slide this forward. So because we shot in 4K and we have a super high resolution file, we can smooth as much as we want. Um, well, not you don't want too much, um, but we can smooth quite a bit so that we can um, get the smoothest shot possible. So as you can see, the scale and the rotation don't affect it as much as the translation does. If we slide this over, then that's getting really zoomed in. So I want to pull that out a little bit so that we still have detail over the shot. One thing I'd suggest is when you're shooting photos, is shoot with a wide angle lens if possible. This was done on a 30 millimeter on the A6300, um, which translates about to um, a 55 millimeter on your APS-C. Um, or a 45 millimeter, sorry, on a full frame camera. Um, I should have done it um, with a 16 millimeter or a 20 or something a little bit wider so that this smoothing, um, because it's cropping in, you still get more of a wide angle shot. Because this is cropping in on a 30 millimeter, this is getting a little bit more like a telephoto shot. So that's been smoothed already. We can see what it looks like. So that looks pretty good just on its own. Um, if you want, you can apply a little bit more color grading to the video afterwards, um, but for the most part, you'll get a better quality if you're doing it all in Lightroom initially. If you're doing this in Premiere Pro as well, it's fairly similar. Just apply the warp stabilizer to it, and then you're good to go, which usually ends up with a better result than Final Cut Pro. Well, that's today's video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned how to do your very own hyperlapse. Again, if you want the full, um, all the original full pictures, um, just let me know and I'll send those to you. Thank you guys so much for watching and for all the support. We're about to hit 9,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. So let's keep growing and keep producing amazing content. Thank you guys for all the support and I'll see you next time.